What's up YouTube, Jay here. The much requested video is finally here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install Python and Tesseract, and then I'll show you how to call Tesseract from Python to extract text from images. This video will be helpful if you're looking for a way to script text extraction from images. However, if you're only trying to extract text from a single image, you can use Tesseract.js directly from the browser without having to go through the hassle of installing any tools. I'll link to that video in the video description. With that said, let's jump into the video. The first half of this video is on installing Python and Tesseract. We'll start by installing Python. We're going to go over to python.org and the downloads page for Windows, because that's the system that I'm currently running on. We'll go to the latest stable release, and you can see at the time of video recording, that's 3.11.5. If there's a different latest stable release version when you're installing this, you can probably go ahead and install that as long as it's a 3. something. You could also install a pre-release, but that may be unstable and you can see some bugs or Python could crash. So we're just going to stick to the latest stable version for this video. Come down here and let's go with the Windows installer 64-bit and then we'll wait of course you can pause the video here while it downloads for you we're going to add Python to the path because that just makes it easier since we don't have to manually install it afterwards if we select this option. I'm going to go ahead and install it on my C drive, but you can install Python wherever you want. From here, you should be able to open the command prompt and type Python hyphen hyphen version, and you'll see that you have Python installed. And we also have pip installed, which is the Python package manager, and we're gonna use that to install PIL or Python image library and PyTesseract a little bit later in this video. Now let's go over to the Tesseract GitHub page. I'll drop a link down in the video description. Scroll down to the Installing Tesseract section, and you can either build it yourself if you want to, or you can just install the pre-built, which is what we're going to do in this video. So scroll down to Windows, and then click on University of Mannheim, then click on the download link for the latest installer, and wait for that to install. Once the installer is downloaded, we can run it, and if you wanted to, you could also install additional language data here. I'm just going to install English, which is the default. If we open a command prompt and try to run Tesseract, you'll see that it's not available yet since it isn't on our path. But if we go to the directory that Tesseract is in, we can run the Tesseract command and see that it is installed. So we need to add this directory to our path environment variable. To do that, search for environment variables in Windows Search, and then click the option that appears, click environment variables, and then select the path environment variable and click edit. Then click new to add a new item and paste in the directory path to the folder that Tesseract is installed in and click OK. Now, once we start a new command prompt, we can see that Tesseract is available from any directory. Note that you will have to open a new command prompt. If you already had one open before you added to the path, it won't be available yet. You have to open a new command prompt. Just to verify that Tesseract is set up correctly, I've got some images in this directory. If I open up the command prompt and then change directory into this directory with the images in it, I should be able to say Tesseract, then pass the name of the image, which is testimage.png, and then pass a value for the output, which in this case, we want it to print directly in the terminal. So I'll put std out for standard out. Alternatively, I could give it a file name to save the output in a text file. So when I run this command, we'll see that we get the text from the file printed out exactly as expected. If you don't see this, then something went wrong with your Tesseract install, and that will need to be sorted out before continuing with this video. So now that we have Python and Tesseract installed, the second half of this video is going to be about running Tesseract from inside Python. We'll start by installing the PyTesseract library. The PyTesseract library is a wrapper around Tesseract and just allows you to easily use Tesseract from inside Python. We'll also need some way to feed an image into PyTesseract, and a common way to do that is by using PIL or Pillow, which is the Python 3 version of PIL. So in the command line, we can do pip install PyTesseract, or, you know, if you're smart, you can just copy directly from the uh, documentation and hit enter to run, and now PyTesseract will be installed. If you run pip install pillow, you'll see that it should already be installed because PyTesseract is dependent on it. If not, you can install it this way. Now let's hop over to idle, which is the IDE, which is included by default when you install Python. You can also use any other text editor that you want. We can create a new file and then just refer to the PyTestRect documentation. In this case, I played around a bit. The documentation just uses the name of the image, but I had an issue with passing the relative path to Pillow. I'm sure there's a way to do it, but I didn't want to spend the time diving into it. So in this case, I just passed the full absolute path and that worked fine. You can see that once I use this full file path and then run the script, we get the output printed out since we're passing it to the print function down here. If you wanted to do some other logic with the text from the image, you could save the text to a variable and do whatever you need to do. 
So that example there is a very basic script. Now let's write a slightly more advanced script, which will loop over all the files in a directory and use Tesseract to extract the text and print it out. So for this one, we're going to import path from pathlib so that we can easily get a list of files in a directory. I'll define the directory that we want to use, and then I'm going to call .glob and pass in star.png, which will limit this to only PNG files. You could also filter by JPEG or any other file type that you want. So once we have this list of files, we'll loop over each file and run Tesseract for each one. When we run this, you can see that all the text from each PNG image in the specified directory was printed out. Finally, I'm also going to print out the file name and a visual separator so that this long blob of text is easier to read and to find what you're looking for. This looping example is still pretty simple at the end of the day, but it would be pretty easy to expand on. An example use case might be searching through a lot of images to find certain text. For example, let's say you have a folder with a lot of memes. You don't remember the file name, but you remember some text from the meme. You may be able to use something like this to search through all the images for that text. The only real modification you would need to make is to add an if statement to check whether the image text contains the text that you were searching for, and if so, only print out the file name and the text if the text from the image does contain the text you're searching for. So here are the two example scripts we wrote in this video. I'll also toss them in GitHub and leave a link down in the video description for convenience. In this video, we walk through installing Python and Tesseract and making sure that Tesseract was installed correctly. Then we installed PyTesseract and Pillow to be used in our Python scripts. Once we had everything installed, we wrote a simple Python script to use Tesseract to extract text from an image, and then we wrote a slightly more advanced script to loop through all the PNG images in a directory and extract and print text from each of them. We also talked about a potential use case where this looping example may be helpful. I hope you found the video helpful. If you did, please give the video a like so more people will see it. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. And if you would like to see more videos like this in the future, please consider subscribing. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.